may be a matter of public record. And this may be a matter of public record. So after every debate in Senate, it is necessary, it is prudent that members of Senate should cast a vote. Most times we always go with the voice voting. But then when we do the voice voting and we are still unsure of the result or it does not reflect the true interest of their delegates or the senators in the house, we mostly resort to vote by head count or vote by secret ballot. So these are the three steps of voting in Senate. However, we mostly go with the uh, voice voting. Voice voting is always the first step. Then in times where it is necessary, we use the other forms of voting. We go either by head count or secret ballot, based on context or the situation at hand. And to, this leads to my next point, that is debating. We all know we have to debate on an issue before we proceed to vote on that issue. So in debating, senators should present their points clearly and concisely during debates. That is, if you should state something, it should be factual. And we are to take note as senators that each senator usually has a limited amount of time to speak to ensure everyone has a, an opportunity to contribute. And before you would be given the opportunity to debate, you should always take note that you have to catch the eye of the speaker, which is very necessary. The speaker is like the referee of the house. He oversees everything going on in the house. So before members could, would stand up and address the house, it is prudent that they catch the eye of the speaker. So in Senate, in Senate settings, what usually happens is that a member of Senate, either of the left bench or right bench, would rise to his feet, yes, and the Speaker of Parliament or the Speaker of Senate would address that person or mention that person's name when that person catches his or her eye. He mentions that person's name and gives that person the floor to debate on issues. In the absence of that, should a member just stand up and begin to voice out his or her grievances or his or her points, it is not pardonable or it is not professional as members of Senate since we are guided by rudiments. Next, as we focus on debating, there is a need to speak in terms. So in that, it leads us to our next point, speaking in terms, terms. Senators usually speak in terms and are usually recognized by the presiding officer before they can address the Senate. Interrupting another Senate while speaking is generally discouraged. Like I said, to speak in terms simply refers to one member having the opportunity to address the House. Then he resumes his seat and another member stands up to also give his quota or contribute his quota to what has been given. So in this state, when one member addresses on a topic, you feel you have something to say. As a member of Senate, what you, what you have to do is you have to wait till that member is done with his submission. Then you also rise, catch the eye of the speaker. Then you also give your contribution. In the case where two or more people rise to give their contribution, the speaker would always or normally go for, the speaker would normally choose to call them based on the order of precedence. The order of precedence is like a hierarchy that is in the helm of affairs from top to down who are the highest. So it is usually done in the way of numbers where you would even hear at the national level, members are asked, what is your number? So the higher you go, it means that then the highest, the number you have determines your rank in the house. So the speaker like this is the number, is the highest of the house. 
And after the speaker is the deputy speaker, who is like the second in command of the house. Before we come to the right bench leader, or maybe we look to the left bench leader, which in parliamentary terms is majority and the minority. Yes. So in, in a case where the first deputy speaker is up, and maybe myself, a common floor, is up. The speaker is most likely to call the first deputy In speaking in Yes, in into consideration. And in that, whilst you are speaking in sense, members are to take note that there is a need for respectful conduct. In this, senators are expected to maintain a respectful demeanor during debates. Personal attacks or disrespectful language and gestures are not tolerated. In a house of record, it is always believed or it is always necessary that as members of the house, we uphold integrity in our dealings with our colleague members of the house. So senators are always to take note to avoid the use of personal attacks or disrespectful language and gestures and gestures in Senate. Yes. So next we move to dress code. Talking about dress code, we have official or recognized ways of appearing formal or not naked in the House of Senate. So with that, it's normally stated in the standing order, which is like the Bible of the Senate. The Bible of the Senate has its own orders in them. That is rules and regulations, if you should put it in layman's, layman's terms, rules and regulations, which guides the processes and everything being done in the house. So senators are always expected to adhere to a formal dress, dress code, often including a business attire when attending senate sessions. This represents professionalism and respect for the constitution or the institution. Next, I'll touch on attendance. Senators are required to attend all scheduled Senate sessions unless there are valid reasons for absence. Prior notification is generally expected if a senator cannot attend the session. So in every Senate, there is a, there is a helm of communication. That is, there is a mode of communication. So should a member not be able to attend a Senate sitting? The mem should, a should a member not be able to attend a Senate sitting? It is required that that member officially addresses the, his leader, that is his bench leader, or addresses that the clerk, addresses the clerk on his reason for being absent for that said sitting. Next, we talk about punctuality, which I didn't approve today. Senators are expected to be punctual and arrive on time for all Senate sessions. Lateness is discouraged as it disrupts proceedings. Yes. And in that, we all know that in addressing the chair, one very important thing, in addressing the chair, senators typically address the presiding officer. We normally say presiding officer because in the absence of the speaker, the first deputy speaker can take charge of the house. And in that he is termed as presiding officer or speaker, you just address him as speaker. So Madam Speaker or Mr. Speaker. So, and in addressing them, members are often, members 
are often required to take permission from the chair before speaking or addressing the house. Yes. Honorable Senate. Hello. Honorable Senate. Yes, um, I've addressed a, a few of um, the Grassack Senate sitting protocols and in no order I would touch on them again. I would mention them by the thematic areas I addressed. So one, I talked about punctuality. Two, I talked about attendance. Three, I talked about respectful conduct. Four, I talked about dress code. Five, I talked about speaking intent. Six, I talked about addressing the chair. Seven, I talked about debating. Eight, I talked about voting. Nine, I talked about preparation. And 10, I talked about confidentiality. On this note, if there is any issue I haven't addressed or there is anything any member wants to ask, uh, members are free to ask. Yes. So this brings us to the end of this session. That is addressing the House on Grassack Senate sitting protocols. Yes. Members are free to ask questions at this point. Hello. Hello. Uh, right on, Rabo. Yes, boss. Uh, this is my first time of attending the meeting. How do we know the leaders? Yes, so before, before a house is inaugurated, before Senate is inaugurated, what is mostly done is there is an election. There is normally an election in the house. And in this election, leaders would be elected and then they would represent the house in its dealings. Yes. What I mean is currently... Um... Do we have the leadership or not? Well, I am not aware of that. Okay, so when will the election take place? I believe uh, those are issues. Yes. Right on our headboard, please. Um, can I come in, please? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so um, with that particular person, the leadership possibility has been selected as a yeah, and on Friday, you will be seeing most of us. I'm sure you would have seen us, you know, post messages on the page um, from time to time. Yeah, actually, all the, let me see, most of the members of um, leadership are here. We are the um, School of Graduate School Conference trying to create this, um, set, uh, let me see, training section. So you would see us in person on Friday. Actually, my name is Senator Omega. And I'm the okay. speaker of the house. The other members to us who you'll be seen on that day. I'm sure for Dora, most of you know of it because of most of the messages on the page. You see a name Dora. Yeah, so that's it. So you usually see the members. But however, on the day of certain, there'll be um some election that will be conducted. One of the elections that will be conducted is for the clerk um, of Senate. You know, the last section in the youth law, but what we did that we try as much as possible to get um, a rep from Senate to serve on the leadership of Senate. So that at least when there's the need for communication of information, we have someone who can communicate information. So on that, we will let the news um, clerk, what we normally call speaker, I'm um, sorry, secretary. So we select the new secretary for the house. 
and that's a question will be from among the Sahwi students. Then we'll also select bench leaders as well. So the bench leaders are also going to support, sorry, the deputy bench leaders. So the deputy bench leaders will be supporting the bench leaders when they are not around. And we expect that there will, be people, there will be people who will be on top of issues on that day. So these are the elections that will be held on Friday. Bench leaders, right and left bench leaders, then the club or secretary to the house. So um, I hope that answers your question. Okay. Thank you very much, speaker. Yeah. Yes, so please, any more questions? The house is open for questions. All right, senators, in the absence of any other questions, I peacefully hand over to Right Honorable Salom, the rightful owner of Grassac Senate, <laughs> Sandwich Senate, to take over from here. Okay, thank you, Right Honorable and Bonobusu. Actually, he's the um, immediate past speaker of SRC Parliament. Um, Honorable, we are so grateful to have you today with us. Yes, um, you've given us a lot of insight into um, the activities of, let me say, Parliament or Senate, and we are really grateful for that. Yes, yeah. so I think, um, I don't know if Honorable members still have a question or they do not. I know you have a very busy schedule. Yeah, but um, we are so grateful for the same. So we would also try to you know, go through some few stuff as well before that day. Yes. So um, if there's no other person for our honorable um, Edward Owusu, please. Uh, uh, please, uh, I have a question. Please, you can go ahead. Yes. Um... We have course reps. Uh, I'm the general rep, but we have course reps. Are the course reps part of the Senate? Yes, yeah, so Senate, you know, in most, let me say, programs or departments, we do not have a general rep. So what we normally do is we have, um, you know, some departments have programs. So for one program or one year, one person, and we prefer that we prefer that to you know the individual course first. For most graduate programs, um, one person who is chosen as a course, or let me see, the course rep is the same for all the other programs, or let me okay. see, all the other courses that they do. So it's that one person that we prefer to have on, um, let me see, in the house of Senate. For the others who have, let me see, maybe psychology, let me see, um, human psychology. There's a course for um, human anatomy. There's another course for yeah. in that situation. It's all amounts to the same program, which is psychology. So we cannot have the individual courses, but we want the best who is in charge of the program psychology. So which would be you in this situation? Okay. Yeah, so the individual courses, that's not what we want. We want the person who is the head of the program. Or the rep for the program. Otherwise, yes. our psychology you know, having five, you know, senators, which cannot be possible. Okay. Right. Thank you very much, Honorable. Thank you. Okay. So, um, any other issues? So we'll try to. 
we'll try to go through some few other stuff in addition to what uh, Honorable Edmond um, said. So um, certain basic technologies. So he has talked about um, how, um, or let me say, um, starting a meeting, the leadership. He has also touched on how to debate and the others. But in our house, there are some few stuff that we make mention of. So when we mention some terms, or let me say when you come on Friday and we mention some terms, um, we don't want you to get confused. So we'll go through some of these basic terms so that at least all of us would feel comfortable when it's mentioned. You will not do otherwise. Yes. So for example, if on that day, I think I mentioned something like the clerk. So the clerk is more like um the secretary. Yeah, so if you can't mention the clerk, you can still say secretary, but in our parliamentary discourse, we normally we normally prefer the use of the word club to sit So if I call the club to sit it, you should just know that it's the secretary that we are talking about. Then we have when we also see the word chamber, chamber. So chamber basically refers to the area that we are going to use for our discussion or the room where we are going to have the scene system. So that is what we call the chamber. And per um, the arrangement made, our chamber on Friday is going to be Sasakawa conference room. So when we say chamber, we are talking about that space where senators are going to sit for discussion purpose. So the chamber can be physical or it can be virtual. So on Friday, we are going to you know, mix this too. So when we say chamber, please don't feel like it only goes to the house. Chamber also includes the virtual component as, it, um, as we are trying to do it to that extent. Then when we also talk about a bill. So maybe on Friday, you hear something of a bill. So when we say a bill, we are just saying that it's a draft or let me say an out of submit, um, which can either be, let me say, public or private. So we are saying that, for example, there are some issues. So let's say for your school fees, and we want to have a bill. So a bill is just a document that we are considering out of submit, which is a document that we have proposed. Yeah, and this proposal can come in two forms, either from a private Members, so it's a private bill. It's just from someone within the House of Senate. So any of you or any of, let me say, senators can propose a bill. However, and when a member proposes a bill, we call it a private bill. Or in some instances, we call it a private member's bill. It's the same. But however, if it comes from, let me say external, let's say the executive, the executive want to pass a bill, maybe concern a specific activity. We call that one a public bill. So a public bill is, let me say, basically coming from outside the house. Let me put it in simple words. So any bill that comes from outside the house, we'll call it public. But any bill that comes from within the house of Senate is called a private bill. So the individual can propose and the processes are being followed. However, in most instances, leadership of the house don't, you know, propose a bill or don't sponsor a bill. So when you say sponsor, it's more about the person who is, let me say, promoting or those, the individuals who are promoting a specific bill. So leadership do not. So I'm sure Honorable Edmond made, made mention of that, that leadership don't debate. So we don't debate in the house. So the speaker would not take sides. So if the speaker, in case Friday, I'm taking sides, you can prompt me that I'm taking sides. Sometimes it's out of emotions. Yeah, so you can prompt me and that will be done. But speakers don't debate. They are supposed to be neutral as well. Yes. However, when I say, when I, when I say that, um, speaker does not debate. I'm talking about the person in the chair. So if in the event that I should step down and my deputy, who is honorable road that takes over, she becomes the speaker. So she can also debate. But however, if she does not take the seat, she's just an ordinary member of the house. And that opportunity can be given her to 
you know, make contributions on the floor of the house. Then we also say that in relation to that, when it comes to debate, whenever she stands up, or let me say the deputy stands up, she's given that privilege. So when we talk about privileges of the house, one of the privileges of the house has to do with who has the, or who can catch the speaker's eye first. So the leadership of Senate, let me say here, I'm talking about the bench leaders, the right bench leader, the left bench leader, the identity, the whips. These are people who are, let me say, when they stand up, they command authority over members who do not have any portfolio. So if in the course of the debate, the deputy speaker stands up, I'm supposed to give her the privilege, even though if there are 10 people already standing up or 10 people already up. So I would have to call her over the others. The same way if the right bench leader is also up, I would have to call the right bench leader before any other person. Then that of the left bench, then the deputies also follow in that order. Yes. So on the floor of the house, when you are up and you see any of these people up, please don't ask, don't let me ask you to sit down. Just know that so far as they are up, you are supposed to sit. So after they are done with their contribution, then you can also get up and also catch the speaker's eye. And you see, when we use the word catch the speaker's eye, it's at the discretion of the speaker. I have two eyes, but I can refuse to see you. Yeah, so um, it's not that when you stand up, you are supposed to be given that opportunity automatically. And one of the things we will be trying to enforce on Friday is that every member gets the opportunity to speak once on an issue. Because most of you realize that in most of our certain, we can spend six, eight hours in a certain because everyone wants to talk. This time around, we are not going to allow for that to happen. So we'll give you the opportunity once per an issue on the floor of the house. If you have the opportunity after talking, we will not call you. You will not catch my eyes again. Let me put it down. So let's try as much as possible to organize our thoughts before we get up. That when you are given the opportunity, you deliver all that you want to talk about. Yes. So as part of that, on tomorrow, which is Thursday, we'll try to make the other sheets available or the other paper. So when we talk about the other paper, it's just basically a paper which has the agenda that we intend to discuss. So we'll give you the agenda tomorrow. We'll be putting it on the platform. You take a critical look at the agenda. You try to jot down your points before you come on Friday. So that when you come on Friday, you know what you want to talk about. Yes. So that's it. So other, let me say, other paper is just a paper that contains the agenda that needs to be discussed. Yeah. And the other paper is divided into two. We have before the commencement of public business or before the commencement of public business, they have um, after commencement. So what it means is that the first part, it's just the preliminaries where we try to you know, the speaker will pray, the speaker will tell us, um, will give us a, a short address. If the president also wants to give an address, that happens. Then personally, if there are questions you want to ask, which are on the other paper. So we ask members that if you want to talk about something, or let me say pricing consent, let us know. We will put your name on the other paper. Then we'll give you the opportunity to, you know, read out your question. And we also invite the executive or the person the person is being addressed to. So if the person's addressed to senior leadership, we would address it. If it's to the executive, they would also be available to address it. So the last day for this to take place is tomorrow. So that we can adequately also write to the officers who will be needed on the floor of the house to answer questions, they can also prepare. Yeah, so from now to tomorrow, you still have the opportunity to come up with your question. You can put it on the page. You can forward it to me. You can forward it to any of the leadership as well. We will try to you know, get 
either the executive or leadership to address the question. And when you write a question, please indicate who you want to address that particular question. So if it's about, let me see, um, there is ladies, uh, or let me say this month is a breast cancer awareness month. What is um the let me say what is cancer doing for women? You know automatically, surprise you've mentioned women, it's supposed to be addressed to the women's commissioner. Then we would inform her, then she would come to the floor to address the challenge or to address the issue that you raised. Then another term that would also be used in, is what we call um, standing committees, or let me say committees. So basically in the house, when you say committees, I'm sure all of us know what committee means. So uh, Mr. Charles, please, you have any question? No. Oh, okay. So we are seeing the committee is just, let me say, a party which is formed by the house, either in whole or part. So when I use the word whole or part, what I'm trying to say is that a committee can be formed by the house for the duration of the entire system, or let me say the entire tenure of leadership or, or the house, or it could be just for a specific activity. So in that situation, if it's for a specific activity, then we would call it an ad hoc committee. Yeah. Then we have what you call the standing committee. So the standing committees are those committees that are mandatory for SNITs to form at all times. Then we have the select one to as well. Then another thing that we would be looking at is um, when we talk about um, functions. So when you call an officer, and we say that the officer is not performing its function. Then basically what you are trying to tell the officer is that he is not, you know, um, executing his powers or duties as it may or should be. So that is what you call function. So for example, the right bench leader is not, you know, let me or let me say the whip is not trying to equip the bench. I can call the whip and say that the whip, you are not performing your functions. So what I'm trying to tell him is that the duties and the powers giving him, he's not exerting that. So that would mean that you would have to look at that. Yeah, so I've talked about leadership already. So when we also say meeting, so when we use meeting in our chamber, the meaning of meeting just means sitting, sitting or sitting, that is meeting, just like we know any other meeting. Then we have um, what you call the table. So when we say the table, the table basically refers to um, the office, or let me say the office of the clerk, or the clerk's table. But in our jurisdiction, what happens is that the clerk or the secretary, the speaker, um, we have the marshal, then um, occasionally we have the chief justice also coming to visit that we will all sit at the same table. Yeah, we all sit at the same table. So basically, when we see the table, we are just talking about that table where the clerk sits, which in this situation, where leadership will be sitting. So when we call you to the table, then that is what we try to mean. Yeah, we are trying to mean. Then we are saying that if you hear the word synodine, synodine as a sounds like a big word in the ear, does not mean anything bad. So what synodine means is that most often, you know, unlike, let me see, normal lectures or something, meeting, we can say that, okay, we'll meet tomorrow at this time and this time and this time, or we'll meet next week at this time and this time. Most often, when it comes to senate activities, we are not certain of the actual time. So, or the actual day. So we use the word synodine to mean, um, how would I put it? Any other day. Any other the length put it in some way, any other day, that is the meaning of synodine. So it means that on any other day or indefinite, let me use the word indefinite. So the meeting has been adjourned. So when we use agenda, it means that we more like we are closing indefinitely. So agent synodine, we are closing the meeting to be held at another, another day or time. Yeah. Then when we talk about members, so remember anyone within the chamber, 
is, or let me say, a new senator is a member of the House. The reason why I was trying to correct myself is that sometimes we have observers. Observers mm -hmm. are not senators. They are not program reps. <laughs> But okay. they come to the house. That's the meeting. Right. Mm, so they come to the house just to observe what is all going. So if someone comes to the house to observe what is all going, then we we'll call that person yeah. observe. Okay, the the person, person, hello. Search me. Oh. Uh, okay, so a member is a senator, and here we've defined a senator to be a person who is representing a program. Yeah, so if you're not representing a program, then you become an observer or what you call a visitor. Then we have what we call orders or what we call standing orders. So, standing orders have already placed a copy in the group, which is called Grassack Standing Orders. So that's basically the standing orders or that book that I've placed or PDF I've placed in the page is what governs our activities in the house. So anything that we do is governed by the standing orders. Yes, so if you go contrary to the standing orders, there are measures that are also allocated and most often um, the speaker interprets how this should be carried out. Yeah. Then we can also have what we call petition. Petition. So I've talked about bill, so I can also talk about petition. So petition means a written prayer or plea presented to the Grasa QCC Senate and includes all such submissions relating to public or private matters. So I think um, you people have already written a petition already. So for that, I think most of you know what a petition is. Yeah, so I wouldn't go so much into that. Then when we talk about who a minister of the house is. So when we talk about a minister of the house, we are just talking about any member, or let me say any executive member becomes a minister. So in our jurisdiction, or let me say graduates, or let me say um, postgraduates, we have the women's commissioner. So we we'll refer to that women's commissioner as the minister for women affairs. Then we have the president, we have the finance, or let me say the treasurer, who would call the minister of finance and the other. So those are the people we call ministers, but we don't normally use the word ministers. We use their portfolio name to call them. Yes. Then um, I think that would be most of the things that we would be using in the house. Yes. I don't, if there's any questions so far, please, you can let me know so that I try to address them. Please, any question? Yeah. Hello. Yes, please, you can go ahead. Yeah. Right on, Rabo. Yes. Do we, uh, do we have any written? Uh, document as standing orders like some of the things you have spelled out yeah so I've placed a copy on the page so there's a copy on, on the there's a sandwich Smith's page yes, I'm talking so about something like a document a book yeah so we have you see the book the web or let me say the soft copy is what I've placed on the page so there is a okay. book itself please all right. So we want members to be abreast with most of the issues before they do come on Friday. So we've made All a right. copy available. Yeah. But if you want the hard copy, what you are trying to do is that currently we are trying to revise the standing orders. So after the revision process, um, we would make it more of a book in a smaller book form that members can, you know, purchase for their parliamentary purpose. So maybe when it gets to that point, and you need a hard copy, we could give you a hard copy at a subsidized price. Okay. Yeah. So, Honorable um, Thomas, please, you can go ahead. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity, right, Honorable. I don't know whether the questions I'm coming to ask is 
in the standing orders. I haven't changed on it, but please, if you can help me out, I'll be glad. Uh, my first question is, uh, how many times are we supposed to meet within this sandwich period? How many times? And the second one, what is the benefit as a senator? What are some of the benefits that a, a senator may get? Thank you very much. Okay, so for the first question, so basically, we are supposed to meet twice a semester. But unfortunately, by the time people came to camp, um, campus, let me say most, or let me say the greater part of the semester is off. And we did not have your articles to us for. Well. So even this one, we would have, we had to, you know, be moving from class to class and the rest to have your details. So I do they're supposed to be twice, but due to, one um few challenges, sometimes we do it once. So since my time of being in the house, we've mostly done it once per semester. Yeah, but however, it's supposed to be ideally two. Yes, so that is it. But we are hoping that in future- Very well, okay. Then the yeah, so the second one, um, the benefits of being a senator one, you get to represent your class and you, be, you get to you know let the views of your people be um, presented. So for example, if your class has a peculiar issue, it may not be affecting the entire, uh, the entire graduate student, but it may be affecting your class. It's an opportunity for us to know what are the problems affecting your class. And this gives us a fine idea as to how to you know, tune programs of grass acts. So for example, as it were, we do not know that most of you were going to have class from five going. If you had known, we would have placed the meeting a little bit after five. So you could see the load numbers that we are receiving. So it's mainly because we do not have this information. But if you're a senator, you, be, you get the opportunity to present the views of your people as one. Apart from that, too, when it comes to the individual benefits, you receive a certificate as well. And we have the certain allowance to as well that you can get for spending time with the house. And it also gives you the experience of how parliamentary activities are being carried out. Yeah, so I think this is a soft skill that you cannot get in the way. So we try to train you to have the parliamentary you know, regimen so that when you see some, some stuff on telly, but then the parliament of Ghana, you wouldn't be confused. You would have gone through the process and have understood the process to as well. And personally, for me, I like it because it sometimes helps you to, you know, bring up personal problems to us work, well, not just your class, but things you've observed. And that's a loan house build the association as a group. Yes. We have honorable, um, what do you call it? Um, Jack Ross, to the right bench leader here. He can, if you want to ask something, you can also go ahead and add, add it. I think in the meantime, um, I think someone's on this up. Mr. Charles. Mr. Charles, please come by. Yes, right honorable. So probably will join later. So we um, can also keep sitting and waiting. I'll I'll be glad we'll if uh, we could have we'll if we could have yeah. tomorrow's uh, order of business so that we can go through before we come to the house. Yeah, so the, we'll try to do that. Actually, we should have placed it today, but um, we had some few last minute changes. So we are trying to you know, make adjustments to it because um, as much as possible, I want the order sheet to always be available 48 hours before the meeting. Yeah, so we still have a little bit of time. So this evening or tomorrow, in the course of tomorrow, we'll make it available to you. Then you can prepare as well. Yes. All right. So please, as I speak to you, um, I mean, a lecture that started at six. So once the lecture uh, has reported, I'll ask your permission respect, respectfully to drop off. Okay, there is no problem. Actually, we are almost done with the meeting. Now, so. All so right, thank no you. Ah. 
Um, please, any other question before we close today's section? Okay, so, honorable ones, please, you have a question. Okay, so I think um, we can all, I can't see anyone's hand up, so I'm guessing that at least we have a fair idea of what you can saw on Friday. So please, um, the standing orders is there, so you can as well reach through the standing orders to address yourself with um, the uh, rudiment of Senate, so that when we come on Friday, we discuss issues and also close on time. The reason why we are doing this training is because we want to make sure that we don't have extended you know, sitting period. We want to close on time. So please, Friday, the time is four o'clock. I don't know if others have lecture around that time, but the time is four o'clock. And we are hoping later by worst case scenario by eight o'clock, we should be done. We don't want to go beyond that because people stay afar and we cannot risk amino I mean, them. Any, let me see, we cannot rex, rex it. Yeah, so we will try as much as possible to stay within the four hours. If we close before it, that would be perfect for all of us. And I have to also add that provisions are being made for your feeding and, you know, drink. Or let me say water. Let me put it in the right spot there. So there's food will be provided, water will be provided, transportation will be provided after the meeting. So there is no need for you to be scared. The transport, or let me say the um, pass would take you to wherever you stay. So there is no need for you to be scared. Just be present. When we close, we make sure that you, you get home safely as well, but we'll still stick within the four hours. So please prepare and prepare well, so that when you are given the opportunity, you can also you know, express yourself as well. So in the absence of any question, or issues to be tackled, I think we would end the meeting here for today and we'll meet on Friday as well. So thank you all for joining today's meeting. Thank you, Right Honorable. Thank you, Right Honorable. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Right Honorable. Please, you are welcome. Hope to see you all on Friday. Okay. Very well. Very well. See you too. Thank you. Will you please write down?